Ever. with us tonight. Welcome to Group Therapy. We just want to encourage you that the Lord that we serve will never put more on you than you're able to bear. Can you put your hands on it real good? Come on. Come on, grab your family and let's worship him together. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's minister, family. Sing, if in your life, in your life you are going through, and you don't know really what to do. This is all you have to do. Just call on Jesus. He'll see you through. This is why. Because he knows. Jesus, he knows. And if there's a trial that has come your way and you're looking for a brighter day, just call on Jesus. He'll make a way. I know it for myself because he knows. Jesus, he knows. Come on, how much? We're so grateful tonight we can bear. We can bear. Thank you, Lord, that you know how much we can bear. Come on. How much we can bear. Let's do it again, everybody. Come on, say it. If in your life and you don't know really what to do, we just want to encourage you. Just look to Jesus. That's Lord.
know you got to celebrate Jesus because you know him to be your help. I know there's a testimony out there somewhere of how he's helped you. Yes, God, because he's helped me. I'm a living witness that Jesus is my help. Come on, put your hands on it real good. Yes, God. We celebrate him tonight. Yes, Lord. Come on, God. No, we got to do it again. We got to run it again. Come on, let's tell somebody. My help. My help. Jesus, she is. time for your video announcements. We'd like to say happy birthday to everyone born in the month of June. We celebrate you. Happy birthday. The New Birth Health Ministry in partnership with the Red Cross presents our Bell Memorial Blood Drive Saturday, June 13th from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. in our Bell Family Life Center. Hey, did you know Emerging Generations has an exciting class for girls ages 10 through 17 Saturday, June 12th. Girls Code is intro into physical computing using microbits. Visit newbirth.org to register. The class is open to the first 40 registrants. Hurry, sign up today. Please visit our online call to conquer bookstore to get your copy of our June book of the month, Wild at Heart by John Eldridge. Our King's Table continues to grow as we partner with other organizations to bless our community. Please tell your friends and family to come out Saturday from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. at our Bell Family Life Center for free groceries. Volunteers asked to arrive at 8.30 a.m. It's a no-contact drive through for your safety. Everyone is welcome at the King's Table. It's Testimony Tuesday. You don't have to wait until Sunday to speak well of how God has blessed you covered you, protected you, and healed you. 
I'm telling you, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. I know that this goes against the grain of how it is that we worship in this virtual space, uh, but I want you to take your time and put your testimony right on the screen. Talk about how he woke you up this morning, started you on your way, clothed you with your right mind. There's no way you shouldn't be typing right now, speaking of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. Let me testify. I'm grateful unto God that just on yesterday, uh, my father celebrated another birthday, 77 years. He's alive and strong, sane and saved. I don't take it for granted, but I give God glory and I give him praise. Uh, today, I'm just uh, traveling back from Houston, Texas uh, for the final homegoing celebration of our dear uh, George Floyd. And I testify, literally, it could have been me, uh, but his grace and his mercy. I've gone, now it's your turn. Talk about what God has done for you and how he has made a way for you and how uh, he has blessed you beyond measure and beyond compare. I really want to know your testimony. I want to thank God for our praise team under the direction of uh, Minister Tiffany Boone uh, for preparing our hearts and our minds uh, for the word of God. If God has blessed you, don't wait to the end. You ought to be sowing right now. You ought to be giving now. You ought to be sharing now. I told you on Sunday, every day can be a payday. Uh, you don't have to wait until the 1st and the 15th, but every time you turn around, you ought to be bracing yourself for another way that God's going to download blessings into your life. I've been in a series, and I'm going to continue in it until Father's Day. Uh, it's called the Prospering in a Pandemic. Prospering in a Pandemic. Even at the risk of looking crazy, I want you to say it out loud so your whole house can hear you. I will prosper in a pandemic. Come on, interrupt your own testimony and declare it over yourself. I will prosper in the middle of a pandemic. I want you to journey with me, if you would, to uh, Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. And I'm going to look at uh, verses 28 through 30. Luke 14, verses 28 through 30. I'm reading, uh, as I often do, from uh, the New International Version. Uh, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete the project? For if you lay the foundation and you're not able to finish it. Everyone who sees you will laugh at you, saying this person began to build, but they never finish. Jesus raises a hypothetical to that large crowd and says, what if one of you all are trying to build a tower, but you didn't come to a budget yet? You start laying the foundation, pouring the cement, and now time has passed and it's still not finished. Everybody in town, everybody in your family, everybody in your circle is going to laugh at you and say, look at them. They are a starter, but they're not a finisher. I want to uh, deal with uh, tonight uh, using as a subject, the price is right. The price is right. It is amazing. I want to, to charge and challenge you to uh, find something to... Uh, write down notes with there are some critical keys and points uh, that I want to give to you that I don't trust to your memory but I want you to write it down it is going to serve you well long after this group therapy would have concluded uh, the first thing that I want you to write down hear me is you can pick your decision but you can't pick your consequence you can pick your decision but you cannot Pick your consequence. Consequences are the effects, the results of outcome of something that occurred, and now this is the aftermath. It is the, the response of a situation. The second thing that I want you to write down is uh, people will create storms and then get upset when it rains. 
people will create storms and then get upset when it rains. One of the bitter cod liver pills of the gospel that I had to digest personally is that we can be, I want you to write this down the third one. I've, I've got bullets I'm unleashing tonight. Third thing I want you to, to write down is you can be forgiven of your sins and still have to deal with the consequence of your sin. You can be forgiven of your sin, but still have to deal with the consequence of your sin. So God can forgive you that you didn't admonish that your body was a temple after years of smoking. God has forgiven you. That doesn't mean you won't have to contend with cancer. God can forgive you that you've had a reckless sexual lifestyle. That mean that you're not going to have to deal with HIV. God can forgive you of opening up your church prematurely. But it doesn't mean you ain't going to have to deal with COVID-19 in your congregation. You can pick your decision, but you can't pick your consequence. So many of us see red flags and yet we choose to ignore them. I often say that before you have a crash, God will always show you two exits. Before it is that you find yourself totaling yourself in the vehicle of the journey of your assignment, he'll show you where you can get off. But if you insist on going down the wrong road, not even AAA will be able to pull you out of it. And a whole lot of us deal with uh, our decisions but never want to deal with the consequence. I wonder, even in my own imagination, as flying back tonight from Houston, Texas, I wonder if those uh, four police officers in Minneapolis, Minnesota, when they were outside of that corner store and they accosted George Floyd, when the officer put his foot on the neck of that black man who was absolutely innocent. It was the decision he made out of white supremacy. It's a decision he made out of the reckless abandonment of racism in America. But he never in a million years fathomed that the consequence would be 100,000 people marching in Belgium, 60,000 people marching in Paris, 50,000 marching in uh, Denmark. Never imagine million years did he think the consequence of his decision would be the street that the White House was on would be renamed Black Lives Matter Plaza. He thought about his decision but never thought about the consequence. When it is that uh, four years ago Donald Trump put on a red hat that said make America great again. He didn't know that within his presidency, he single-handedly would have to undo 400 years of harm that has been levied on black people living in this nation. When the Congress found themselves suspended and going home under quarantine, they didn't know that when they came back for an emergency session, that for the very first time, America would be confronted with passing a bill to make lynching a national hate crime. Nowhere in a million years did our parents, our grandparents, after it is that they made a swift and stealth decisions to pull down the Iron Curtain that would, in fact, disembark uh, the lunch counters that were segregated and water fountains that were limited and restrooms that were uh, prejudiced. They never thought that their grandchildren would now have to fight for national police reform. It's the consequence making a decision. That great um, a uh, forward uh, advocate apostle of tele-evangelism, Fred Price, uh, once said many years ago, not making a decision is a decision. Did you hear what I just said? Not making a decision is a decision. You deciding not to do anything is a decision. You'd be amazed how many people have elected apathy 
And because they have elected apathy, they have sworn in the status quo. Today, I come to you just 30 minutes before polling stations close all over the Southeast region. And those of you who did not cast your vote or lift your voice through this enterprise called democracy, you don't even know that you are contributing to a bad cake. Jeremiah Wright, the former pastor of Trinity United Church of Christ in Chicago, Illinois, famed for previously being the home church to President Barack Obama, said that America has made a critical mistake. And the critical mistake is it's akin to making a cake and forgetting to put sugar in the batter. And then after the cake is finished, trying to sprinkle sugar on top. That's not going to fix it. You're going to have to throw away the whole cake and start all over again. What it is that you're seeing in demonstrations, in marches, in rallies, is young people, both black and white, converging in city centers, speaking aloud to powers and principalities that the cake is spoiled. And we have decided that we don't want to eat another piece. Because America, Republicans, evangelicals, president, you need to understand, you can't have your cake and eat it too. That there's going to be a time where we understand how that the queen was in fact prophetic when she declared, let them eat cake and die. There's so many who have gone on before us who have died of indigestion having the bad taste of racism and sexism in their mouths, and they decided not to do anything. Amazingly, you now have to live with your decision and the consequences thereof. I want you to come with me over to our text in uh, Luke's Gospel. Uh, Luke is giving us a significant and a distinctive perspective on the language of Christ. Because you have to understand that Luke is a physician. So whenever it is that Luke is writing, he's doing it with gloves on. He's doing it with a surgical mask. Realizing that he is not looking at the symptoms, he's looking at the disease. And let's uncover, if we can, what it is that Luke wants us to hear, see, and experience from the mind and out of the mouth of the master. In Luke chapter 14, Jesus is talking to a large crowd. And he says to them, what I have the privilege to echo to you tonight. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Don't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you've got enough to complete it. I got to pause right here because in all of my life, I have never heard anybody, an apostle, a pastor, a bishop, an overseer, a prophet. Nobody ever told me that my assignment comes with a budget. So think about what it is that you want to do and then count up the cost. Do you have enough for it? One of the pillar books of reading that I want to commend uh, to you tonight is uh, the book entitled The Cost of Discipleship. Do you know what it's going to cost you to pull together the vision God gave you? Do you know what is the price of your assignment, of your burden, of your journey? Have you sat down? I know we know write the vision, but have you written the budget? I got to ask you, while we're under quarantine, while you're in furloughed, why it is that you have been laid off, why you're in, in between jobs, what's it going to cost you to operate your family while stuff is shut down? What's it going to cost you to be able to feed your children? What's it going to cost you while you've been laid off to get them back in school in the fall? What is it going to cost you to pursue your dream while you're on a job you can't stand? What's it going to cost your mental health to stay in a relationship with somebody you were never assigned to? What is the cost of it? Have you sat down? Have you written out the budget for your assignment? I am uh, new to uh, this uh, newfangled uh, uh, internet enterprise called Airbnb. 
And uh, I was looking uh, for a place because travel is now limited. Space is now limited. Journeying is now limited. So I was trying to find a place uh, for my entire family to come vacation, to detox, uh, to disconnect. And I thought I found the house. It was in the price range that I wanted. I submitted what were the days that I wanted. I turned it in and the price didn't match what was on it got upset and I wanted to know how come this price is not what it said and the email came back Dr. Bryant you didn't read the fine print the price is adjusted hear this by how many people are with you if it's just you it's one price but if other people are coming with you there is a tax that's added on to it there's some of you who are paying a price and it's not just for you you're paying the price for the people you are responsible for. You're paying the price for the people who are going to benefit from your completed assignment. You are paying the price because the enemy knows if you ever survive this, how many people are going to come out with their life intact? There's a high price. He said, I need you, and this is your homework before I see you again on Sunday, is start budgeting. What's it going to cost me? Hear this to obey God. And many of you have the wrong tabulations. Press C on your calculator. Clear it out. Start over. I'm not talking about what is the cost, $5,000, $10,000. How much is it going to cost you in friendships from the people who are going to walk away because they don't understand why it is you stay up late at night and you're still up early in the morning? What is it going to cost you in your social life? The people who don't even understand, I'm not antisocial. I'm just trying to process so much of what's going on in my mind. What is it going to cost you that you're going to have to go on fast that the pastor nor the church calls for? What is it going to cost you that you're going to have to walk away from things that a year ago you thought was a blessing and now you recognize as a burden? What is it going to cost you? He says, I need you to gird yourself up, gather yourselves. Because people are watching you build. <clears throat> and you'd be amazed how many people are not cheering for your success. They don't want to see you get a touchdown. They're waiting to see you get tackled. And because you keep running through the line, because you keep making progress, the only thing they can hold against you, according to our passage tonight, is what you did not finish. Our own minister of uh, fine arts, Mr. Jonathan Nelson, uh, has a song called Finish Strong. And here you are at the six-month mark of one of the worst recorded years in human history. And I'm telling you, get a psychological, emotional, spiritual, and financial budget. What is it going to take you to get to the end of the year? What is it that God is going to have to give you in order for you to keep your head above water? What do you need just for your blood to keep flowing and functioning? What is the cost of what it is that God has burdened your heart to accomplish in this hour? Uh, those of you, I'm, I'm uh, on the Cirque du Soleil tightrope between old school and new school. Uh, and those of you who uh, grew up old school have uh, an advantage over those who grew up new school. The new school can watch whatever show they want on demand. Uh, they, they, they can miss the episode and they can still just pull it right up. They don't even have to go to the movies. They can download it right on their phone. But I'm talking those of y'all who are old school and grew up with As the World Turns. You're only laughing because you know what I'm talking about. Grew up on uh, General Hospital. You still don't know if Luke raped Laura. You still trying to figure out what happened. I'm talking about the old school. Old, old school. They used to watch Sally Jesse Raphael. Used to watch the Phil Donahue show. Old school. And uh, this is before Jeopardy. I'm, I'm talking about real old school. One of the original uh, game shows. This is before Steve Harvey. I'm talking about the original Family Feud when he was kissing everybody in the family, the mother, the grandmother, and the sister. I'm talking about old school. And one of the very first game shows was The Price is Right. And uh, the host would come out and he would uh, unveil behind Studio One, Stage One. Here is a brand new car. 
Chevrolet, GM. Talk about what was in the car. Has radio, has electric windows, has air, has a sunroof. And your only job was to guess the price. Everybody in the crowd is flailing their hands. Everybody is screaming for attention. Pick me. I'm not sure what it is, but I, I want to be closest to the price. And the person who was closest to the price would be able to win and drive all the way back home. Here's what's amazing is that those who were guessing the price never had to put their own money in the game. The people who were guessing the price, they didn't lose any money if they had the wrong answer. They just didn't win the prize. Here's what God is saying today. He's not Bob Barker, but here's what God is saying. What do you think it costs for your whole man? What do you think is the price for keeping your children safe? What do you think is the price for keeping your lungs free from COVID-19? What is the price of keeping the lights on when you done lost your job? What is the price of keeping your sanity when the person you love has left you? Everybody's waving their hands. All I need is a million dollars. All I need is a hundred thousand. All I need is just fifty thousand till next Friday. And somebody from the back is yelling, Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's here it is a price for everyone. I want to say to you, and I don't think that you're going to enthusiastically volunteer the price of what you're going to, the price of what God has for you. Let me first warn you that it comes with no refunds. The price of the assignment on your life, I got to warn you, there are no exchanges. The price for the call on your life, here it is, all sales are final. The price of what it is that God is dragging you to in this hour is going to cost you everything. I'm telling you, it's going to cost you everything. I'm surrounded by a cloud of witnesses who knows that it will cost you just to be in alignment with God. The sixth grade teacher, sixth grade teacher of uh, George Floyd came out on Saturday saying that she found the essay that George Floyd wrote in the sixth grade and for some reason she never threw it away, kept it in our files. And she shared with the uh, commentator of the local news that George Floyd wrote in his sixth grade essay that I am going to change the world. He had no idea as a sixth grader that many years later he was going to change the world but the price of it was much greater than what he could have ever tabulated there's a cost to your assignment there's a cost to your call there's a cost to your gift but I got good news you got what it takes and why is that good news because the price has already been paid 2,000 years ago Jesus paid a debt he didn't owe and now we owe a debt that we cannot pray I want you to lift up that hands I want to pray for you because I don't want you to to rob the register of grace freely he's giving it freely I want you to receive Lord I pray that you will add to our account because right now it is marked insufficient we don't have enough faith. We don't have enough strength. Don't have enough maturity. And God knows we don't have enough patience. God, make a deposit into us tonight. Strengthen us. Stretch us. Build us. So we'll never go emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, or financially broke trying to serve you. We declare it so in Jesus' name. Amen. My grandmother of sainted memory, Pauline Lucas Williams, had told all of her grandchildren, I'll never forget it, you'll never go broke helping other people. You'll never go broke helping other people. I want you to help me to help other people. Right below me in this moment, in this night,
After you've calculated, you've tabu tabulated, you budgeted your assignment. I want you to help us to be a blessing here at New Birth. This coming Saturday, we are excited, we're elated that God has trusted us to be a blessing to 8,000 people. And I want you to bless us so that we can be a blessing to others. On last Saturday, I'm grateful unto God that throngs came in our parking lot just to get tested for COVID-19. And I'm grateful. God is blessing us. On next Monday, free of charge, we are doing computer coding classes just for black girls so that they might be able to compete, that they will find themselves on the global stage. I want you to give right now. If you'll give the best of your service, I don't know how you're going to do it through GiveLify, PushPay, Text to Give, on our secure website, newbirth.org, or you're going to mail it in. But I want you to give something significant. Sixth grade George had no idea what 46-year-old George would accomplish and what he would be able to do. Can I challenge you now to give a gift of $46? I want to ask you to have your children to give six on tonight. But God loves a cheerful giver. I want you to be glad about giving. I want you to be excited about giving. And after it is that you would have given and you have done so generously on Sunday, and I'm expecting you to do the exact same on tonight. After you would have done so, I've got to ask you the most critical question that I will ever ask you. Have you given your life to Christ? Are you a member of a body of Christ called church? Please don't log off yet. Please don't disconnect yet. I got to ask you something. How much it, will it cost you not to be with God? What is the price of you being outside of his will? Can you afford another week not being aligned to a ministry? Is it within your spiritual budget to keep floating from church to church to church and have roots nowhere? It's costing you too much. You need to be a part of a ministry that's praying for you, that's calling your name, that's believing God for your victory. All of the prompts are right below me. Ask that you'll please follow those. I cannot tell you how delight, delighted, how elated I would be to be your pastor. But what would give me the most joy is if tonight you decided to make Jesus your Lord because you've calculated what you've done, calculated where you've been, calculated how you've fallen short, and you realize the only way you can make it is if Jesus is at the helm of your life, steering you clear, so that you do not fall in your own way. I'm glad to be with you on tonight. Do me a favor, please stay tuned. There's some great things that in store. And might I share with you, I need you to please go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. New Birth has got food on this coming Saturday. From 10 until 12, we are ready to serve. Anybody who you know is in driving distance to get here, send them in our direction. While it is that you're sending them, I want you to start counting the cost for your assignment, for your gift, and for your task. I love you, but God loves you best. Stay tuned. New Birth is committed to uh, making sure that the community uh, realizes that the church is not dormant, is not sleep, and is not silent. We're alive and well. It is our aim, it is our intention to make God proud. Uh, we opened up at 10 o'clock this morning with literally thousands of cars lined up all the way to the highway and uh, they keep coming. It's a two for one blessing. They're coming through this line. Uh, they're getting uh, poultry, getting dairy products. Uh, Bowdoin's uh, Dairy brought us crates of milk uh, on this morning. Athena farmers, black farmers uh, have stepped up to the plate. And when it is that they leave out of here, they're going to another line uh, to get their free COVID-19 testing. I'm telling you, this is the church doing ministry out loud in public space, and I'm grateful for it. 
I wish you could see the smiles of uh, seniors, uh, young couples, struggling college students, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, people who are fully employed, furloughed, um, all are here um, on the day and I'm grateful and I'm glad that the church is doing what the church is supposed to do. Jesus said, even as you treat the least of these, which you're doing unto me. Uh, I'm grateful unto God and I am uh, excited uh, about his work uh, and I believe that greater things than these uh, we're going to be able to do.